what is going on guys welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be talking about trailing closure syntax so admittedly this is something i kind of brushed over in my intro videos and it's also been something that some of you have asked for in the comments so i figured it's important enough that it warrants its own video so we're going to start with a playground look at what this thing is and then we'll also jump into a quick little project to see more of a practical implementation of it. So that all said, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that while you're at it. Get execute ready, get excited, and let's start with the playground. So I'm gonna create a playground here and we'll call it closures. And once Xcode decides to load and stop being slow, we're gonna expand this window. So let me put that there and let's go ahead and expand that out there as well as the side. Let me also expand the top and let's jump right in. So before we talk about trailing closures, let's just do a quick primer on what the heck a closure is. So I'm gonna create a constant completion property up here. It's gonna be a closure where it takes a Boolean as a parameter returns void. And we're gonna assign this to value in where value will be a bool, either true or false, and we're simply going to print out said value. So this is a closure assigned to a property. So now we can say completion, and we can pass in true or false since that's the parameter, and we should get that printed out. So go ahead and open up your console with the command shift Y, or you're welcome to hit this button here as well. Hit the play button, and we'll see if the playground decides to be slow. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we get true printed out because we're passing in true. We pass in false. We expect to get false printed out down here. If we pause this and try it again, and we have false. So cool, that's a, that's a closure as a property. Now, of course, closures can also be passed in as a parameter and uh, to a function. And let's look at an example of that. So let's say we have a function called get data. Let's say it takes a URL string and it has a completion and this completion is going to return to us, let's say, some data in a parameter returning void. We would basically call this function as follows, get data, let's say google.com. And then in here, we know it gets a string back. We can say string in and let's just print out that string. And uh, basically, we can in here call the completion and pass in foo. And if we go ahead and run this down here, we should get foo printed out, which we do. So this is all great, but what the heck's the trailing closure syntax? Uh, or how does it look? So trailing closure syntax is literally just syntactical sugar. This here, actually, this function call can be written with trailing closure syntax. And what trailing closure syntax allows you to do, and saying it 10 times in this video is gonna get super annoying, so bear with me. What it lets you do is, because we know the function's last parameter is a closure, uh, it's a function, we can actually close the function call here, and we can get rid of this parenthesis, as well as the label for the parameter, which is completion and its colon. And this is trailing closure syntax. And let me put in something else just so we can see that it does in fact compile and work. Go ahead and pause and hit run again. And we get something else. So you might be asking what the heck is the point of this because it confuses people. And to be honest, uh, there is no functional difference whatsoever from this format or this format. I guess the only argument that people like to make, including myself, I guess to a degree, is that it is a cleaner way to write your code if you know that this is going to return something, you don't need to include, uh, rather, if you know the last parameter is a completion or a closure, you don't need to return uh, or include the parameter for the completion. You can just do it uh, appended at the end of the function call. So the thing to note is the closure must be the last parameter in the function. That's why it's kind of trailing. It's trailing after the function call. And it's trailing closure syntax because obviously it's a closure and it's syntax in our language. Uh, when you call the function, you can simply open close the paren for the initial parameter. And actually, you don't even need an initial parameter, if I'm not mistaken. You can actually simply do this, and this is totally correct as well. It's because the compiler knows that the last parameter or the 
last, in this case, only parameter is a closure. We can call the function and it's smart enough to figure out what we're trying to do. Now, alternatively, sometimes when I write my own apps, I'll also do it this way. It's really irrelevant which way you do it, but it's important to know, especially if you wanna work in kind of the professional skate landscape of iOS. Uh, it's very popular um, for just shorthand and code as most of the Swift programming language is. So let's, uh, let's close this up, this playground, and let's open up a, or create a Xcode project. And let me show you guys a practical use case of this. So we're gonna create a new project and we'll stick with the single view app. And we're gonna call this, um, I don't know, let's call this my weather. So we're gonna simulate as if we're getting weather data Make sure it's in Swift and we're gonna stick with the storyboard for this video, we're not really doing UI, so that's kind of irrelevant. Go ahead and save it to your desktop or wherever else. And let me close my antivirus pop-up that loves to make an appearance in all my videos. And let's go to the view controller. So let's say we had uh, an object that we wanna use to be able to call APIs and get data from some API service. Let's actually create a new file for it. I was gonna be lazy and put it in there, but let's pretend like we're making an effort. So let's call this file uh, API caller. And let's say this file has a class called API caller. We're gonna create a static version of it just so we have a static instance, kind of irrelevant for the purposes of demonstrating the trail enclosure, but just good practice. Now let's say we had a function on here and it was called uh, perform request and we can say with URL and this will be a URL and this is going to return uh, a completion handler and completion handler is going to be at escaping and the thing we're going to return in the parameter will be a result if we get success we'll return data otherwise an error and this whole thing returns a void void capital V and to actually implement this, let's see what this is complaining. Okay, that error went away. We're gonna leverage a URL session. So we can say let task equals URL session shared. And we're gonna do a data task with a URL and this completion, passing the URL. And the completion is going to be data uh, response error in. So actually you might notice here that this function itself inside of this, it actually itself has a last parameter as a closure. So what you could do is you can close this thing here and get rid of this and get rid of this and this becomes trailing closure syntax. Uh, but inside here, we're gonna basically say guard let data is data, making sure the data is there and error is nil. Otherwise, we're going to return. Otherwise, we can call it completion with success passing in the data. And this is trailing closure syntax. That's great. It's complaining that we have this task that we are never using. So let's kick off the session task with a task.resume. Now, let's say I go to my controller. And in my controller, I want to fetch some data from some API that I have somewhere. So we would do something like API caller dot shared. And off of here, we have a perform request and it takes a URL and the last parameter is a completion block closure. So we can pass in a URL, which we'll create right above. And we can get rid of this actually. And we can do results in. And in here, the results we can actually use. So we can switch on the result and say, if it's a, a success, let me actually define that URL before it starts complaining. Let's just pretend that's a valid URL, even though it won't be, and it won't pass the guard. But now we can use the result, and what did I call it? Result, result, and we can switch on it, and we can say, in success case, we get the data back, we can print the data, and in the failure case, we get an error back, or we should get an error back. In this case, I don't think we actually added that code, and we'll print the error so this is a practical example, and I know I typed the code kind of fast, so let me, let's go through this. So basically we have a view controller where let's say we are showing some weather data. Let's say like we have like, uh, I don't know, api.weather.com. That sounds like a website that exists. 
And we use this API caller thing we made and we call this perform request, pass in the URL. And we know the last parameter is a completion block that's gonna return or get called with the result. Result has a success and failure, which is how we handle it. But the important call out here is the trail enclosure part. You close the function call and perform request after the first parameter. And you basically add the trailing uh, curly braces for the closure implementation. And then if we go to the API caller, you may have noticed we did the same thing here because this perform request actually uses the URL session object to perform the request. And it too has a last parameter of a closure in which we get uh, data, which is the bytes, the URL response, and uh, an error if it occurred. So we closed the function call with the parens after the first parameter. Um, if there was multiple parameters, let's say there was three in total, so long as the last one is a closure, we would just do like comma param two and then whatever the value it wants for it was. But the point is that you have this trailing closure block after the function call. So again, like I mentioned, syntactical sugar, but if you ever come across this, uh, you, now you know what it is hopefully, and hopefully that made sense. Now this year at WWDC 2020, they announced you can append multiple closures like this. So for example, like sometimes you would have like a parameter as a closure and then you have another next parameter like error block and this would be another closure and it would get kind of messy. So they're allowing you to do something like this now. So I anticipate this trailing closure. So let's see if multiple parameters and they're all closures. You can basically, um, you can do like an error block here and you can append them all. I just wanted to call that out since it's going to start showing up in code bases as things progress. Now keep in mind this is for the newest Swift language, so it might take time for people to adopt it, but uh, now you know that it exists at least. So that's actually all I had for you guys. Pretty quick video. We didn't really build anything like we usually do. If you haven't smashed that like button already, make sure you do so. Helps out the channel quite a bit. If you're new, make sure you subscribe for daily Swift videos. If you have any comments, errors, questions, suggestions, just want to say hi, uh, throw it down in the comments. I like to reply to every single comment within a few days. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.